Hi ladies, real talk. I personally am no longer practicing a lifestyle of entitlement, resentment, and indignation. I'm on the reclamation path. And I recognized a couple of years ago that when I insist that my needs be met, that what I value be prioritized, and that I otherwise experience safety from a source that has never offered me those conditions, I am trying to buy eggs from the hardware store and I am giving it up. I am giving my power away. That's why I left the medical system. That's why I left Waldorf education. And that's why I left my marriage. When we are in trauma patterns and associated victim consciousness, we can vacillate between compliance and obedience and caretaking and the subtle and secret and wishful expectation that we will get our needs met if we are a good girl. And then we begin to experience the dissatisfaction and disillusionment and frustration, and we start to rebel against the system. The thing is that maturation, adult consciousness, and sovereignty are non-oppositional. They are non-referential. Ultimately, they are an experience of the always present, always there, ready resource of your own power that you have what you need and you can always get exactly what you need when you trust your navigational compass to lead you there. I have found that essential aspects of sovereignty and the reclamation process are to recognize that you actually don't need anything from a system, from a relationship, from a dynamic that cannot meet your needs. You don't need anything from that place that you cannot source yourself. And therefore, that place, that system, that person cannot punish you. They cannot. That's why you can recognize trauma-based mind control and associated psyops because they will divide into two illusionary camps, debating and quarreling and ultimately begging for the bad dad or your mommy to come in and fix the problem in exactly the way they were hoping you would. And the distraction is from the truth, from the reality that you don't need any hierarchical power to experience your own body. That's why you'll note that there's never really a focus on what health is. There's never really a focus on what it is to be a fertile embodied woman. There's only a focus on how will you manage the horrible, scary thing that is inevitably going to happen and how will we protect the vulnerable? These are tried and true strategies that disable you, that disempower you, and that ultimately allow for technocracy and associated authoritarian structures to come in and keep you in the arrested development of your own childlike consciousness. I sometimes use the analogy of a 44 year old woman who's living in her parents' basement. Her parents have abused her her entire life. She's been neglected and mistreated. She often argues with them and yells and screams and demands that she be treated better. But all she needs to do is recognize that she's not a child anymore. She's actually tall enough now to reach the window and she can crawl on out. But what might keep her there is the fear of uncertainty and the enculturation around her own helplessness. She might say, well, I don't know how to work. I don't know how to speak normally. I don't know how to be in the world on my own. But that risk and the associated sense that she might lose all that's familiar, that she might lose what is available, that she might lose the way that her needs are being met in that power struggle dynamic, that is the sacrifice that is demanded at the initiatory gate of her own adultification, of her own sovereign reclamation. As one of the first 300 so-called reproductive psychiatrists in the world, I do believe I have a seat at the table when we're discussing women, their bodies, and so-called feminine empowerment. As a conventionally trained physician, I have written extensively and spoken about what I know the medical system to have on offer when it comes to honoring a woman's body. I've written about birth control. I've written about birth. I've written about psychotropic medications. And the truth is that for very, very good reasons related to our collective trauma, our individual traumas, we collude with these systems to repattern 
very familiar dynamics of our own abuse and bodily violation. But that collusion ends when you no longer consent to give your power to a system that does not know what a woman's body is, that does not know the sacred responsibility that we have to find deep meaning in every decision that we make with this body and to collect ourselves in the presence of other women who can hold us in that process. The system also doesn't know that we can source anything that we need when we come together with like values and like minds. And that's the big reveal. We don't need them. And that's when we have the opportunity to recognize that we may be in a kink dynamic with the bad daddy. I certainly know that I was for many, many years of railing against these horrific parents of bad daddy government and bad mommy medicine and demanding that they see and understand my values and they correct themselves and meet my needs in the right way, not only mine, but everyone's, until I recognized that I was getting something out of that dynamic. And finally, I said, you know what? I'm out. And I'm going to find, build, and create that which feels good, that which resonates with me. And I found that it was already there waiting for me. And I know that that will always be the case, no matter what it is that I imagine I need from a system that doesn't recognize me as a woman. So if you're enjoying pleading with the prison guards or the rapists for proper treatment, even subconsciously, be my guest. But me and the women who share the values that I uphold, we recognize that we don't need to ask for anything that they don't want to give us because we can source it on our own. If you're upset by what I'm saying and you need to think that I'm bad and wrong, know that you are the one empowering me to be so and that that's where reclamation begins. When you recognize that fighting with reality, fighting with what's in front of you and insisting that anyone be different than they actually are is the most draining act of disempowerment and self-betrayal. It's when you recognize that, that you learn what it is that you want, how you can ask for it, and where you can source it. That is women's liberation.